Six months after CEO Elon Musk revealed that, SpaceX is building floating, super-heavy class spaceports, for its next-generation Starship rocket, the company has already purchased and begun converting at least two retired oil rigs. SpaceX has acquired two former oil drilling rigs to serve as these floating spaceports. Named Phobos and Deimos, after the two moons of Mars, they are currently undergoing modifications to support Starship launch operations. SpaceX has long been hinting at future floating launch and landing sites for their Starship launch system. The Super Heavy Lift launch vehicle will have a large blast danger area and pose noise concerns if launched frequently near populated areas. Therefore, sea launch platforms will play a key role in the launch cadence SpaceX plans to reach with Starship, including on-orbit refueling flights for deep space missions and transportation from one place to another on Earth. Job postings by SpaceX have indicated that work on offshore launch platforms has begun in Brownsville, Texas, near their Starship manufacturing and launch facilities in Boca Chica. Positions included crane operators, electricians, and offshore operations engineers, and several of the job listings specified that the position was part of the company's Starship program. Job descriptions for these positions included responsibilities like, designing and building an operational offshore rocket launch facility, and required the ability to work on an offshore platform in Brownsville, Texas. The port of Brownsville is home to a handful of oil drilling rigs, as drilling operations are regularly conducted in the Gulf of Mexico. One rig in port was photographed by NASA spaceflight before and after a sign with the name Deimos was added in recent months. Photographs of the same rig showed that it was previously named Ensco 8500, owned and operated by offshore drilling company Ensco Rowan PLC. Ensco Rowan merged and became Valeris PLC in 2019. The rig, then named Valeris 8500, was sold with another rig named Valeris 8501 to an undisclosed buyer in August 2020 when Valeris filed for bankruptcy. The two rigs sold for $3.5 million each, and as it turns out, the undisclosed buyer was SpaceX. Both rigs have been officially renamed Deimos formerly Ensco Valeris 8500, and Phobos formerly Ensco Valeris 8501, and are now owned by Lone Star Mineral Development LLC. Lone Star was incorporated in June 2020, just before the two rigs were purchased, and a principal of the company is Brett Johnson, who is also the CFO and president of the Strategic Acquisitions Group at SpaceX. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk had tweeted that, SpaceX is building floating, super-heavy class spaceports for Mars, Moon, and hypersonic travel around Earth, the same month that Lone Star was incorporated. It appears that Lone Star Mineral Development LLC is a subsidiary of SpaceX. SpaceX's job posting for crane operating positions in Brownsville mentioned Seatrax S90 cranes by name as one of the types an operator would be using. This same type of crane is the primary model used on the Ensco 8500 and 8501 series rigs. The Phobos rig was seen via satellite imagery in the port of Galveston on January 13, 2020. Galveston is near Houston, Texas, to the northeast of Brownsville and Boca Chica. The idea for offshore launch and landing facilities was first presented officially by SpaceX in 2017, when Elon Musk revealed Starship's Earth to Earth transportation plan. Launching cargo and passengers on suborbital flights around Earth requires operating loud launch vehicles from locations accessible from major cities. Thus, the spaceports would be placed far enough offshore to mitigate noise from Starship's Raptor engines as well as the sonic booms created by landing stages, both the Starship spacecraft and the Super Heavy booster. Offshore launch facilities can also help alleviate congestion and noise levels from SpaceX's land-based Starship facilities at Boca Chica, Texas and the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The primary driver of Starship's development is enabling missions to the Moon and Mars, and those flights will require on-orbit refueling using a tanker variant of Starship in low Earth orbit. Delivering crew and or cargo to the Moon will require at least one refueling, and missions to Mars may require multiple refueling flights. SpaceX also plans to eventually send multiple Starships to Mars during a single interplanetary transfer window. These flights will be in addition to perhaps hundreds of Starship missions to Earth orbit before carrying any people. All of these factors result in a rapid Starship launch cadence which would be difficult to serve using only the two land-based launch and landing sites. Phobos and Deimos will provide two more facilities for this purpose. The two rigs will require extensive modification to support fueling, payload integration, launch, and landing operations. 
As this work continues, SpaceX teams at Boca Chica are continuing to test prototype Starship vehicles and construct the first Super Heavy boosters. Based on the extensive work still needed to prepare the rigs, Phobos and Deimos will likely enter service after the initial orbital flights of the Starship launch system. The first orbital Starship launch from Boca Chica could occur in late 2021, pending successful Starship and Super Heavy testing throughout the year. In a rare burst of visible activity, SpaceX's South Texas Starship factory has begun fabricating a second Super Heavy booster and taken a significant step forward on the first prototype. Set to be the largest operational rocket stage ever built by more than a factor of two, Super Heavy is the booster tasked with launching a fully fueled and loaded Starship tilde 1400 metric ton or 3 million pounds out of the bulk of Earth's atmosphere. Powered by up to 28 Raptor engines, Super Heavy and Starship will weigh upwards of 5,000 metric tons approximately 11 million pounds, and produce anywhere from 5,600 to 7,700 metric tons of thrust at liftoff. Most importantly, though SpaceX CEO Elon Musk has noted that an optimized Starship might be able to reach orbit on a one-way trip, a giant, reasonably efficient booster like Super Heavy is necessary to send Starship into a healthy orbit with all the extra hardware and mass needed to make the orbital spaceship reusable. More than twice as heavy and two-thirds as tall as SpaceX's workhorse Falcon 9 rocket, that will be no small feat. As the second SpaceX launch of the year, and the first of many Starlink missions scheduled to launch in 2021, the company is set to launch the Starlink V1.0L16 mission, the 16th launch of operational satellites and 17th Starlink flight overall. Liftoff is currently scheduled for January 20th at 8.02 Eastern Standard Time from LC-39A at the Kennedy Space Center. This mission was originally scheduled to be the third SpaceX launch of the year, however, a delay to the Transporter 1 mission will now make Starlink V1.0L16 the second launch of the company's busy 2021 schedule. SpaceX is aiming for a new record of 48 orbital missions this year. SpaceX's previous launch record was set last year when the company flew 25 orbital missions. Starlink is SpaceX's own constellation of satellites designed to provide low-latency internet anywhere in the world. Current satellite internet relies on large satellites with long lifespans, generally 15 years or more, placed into geostationary orbit, approximately 35,800 kilometers miles above the Earth's surface and directly over the equator. This allows only a few satellites to cover most of the Earth. However, due to the high orbit of the satellites, it takes more time for a signal to travel to and from the satellite, approximately 550 milliseconds. This prevents current satellite internet providers from offering low latency, high-speed internet like Starlink aims to provide. Starlink's solution to the latency problem is to have thousands of smaller, short-lived satellites, with lifespans of around 5 years, to be placed into a low Earth orbit of approximately 550 kilometers 340 miles and lower. This allows latency to be much lower than any geostationary satellite, since the signal does not travel as far.